the love stories of the Greek mythology are not really as romantic as you'd want them to be. Most of them trace back to abductions and forcefully induced love. Writings suggest that these guys tend to impose lust and desire as love since forever. But little do they know that their love is not an achievement. It is the foundation of existence. No matter how great you are, without love, a person is plainly a body existing without any soul. A monster. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, where today we'll narrate the detailed breakdown of the Greek myth of Apollo and Daphne. But before we get started, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such amazing videos. Now, let's see what happens when lust, desire, and love faces rejection. This story is about Apollo, the god of music, prophecies, sun, and beauty, and the nymph Daphne has quite a few versions. It's a tale about the power of love and the power of Eros, the Greek equivalent of Cupid, who can even blind the most powerful amongst the Greek gods. The story of Apollo and Daphne in Ovid's Metamorphoses was the most famous one and it took place right after Apollo killed Python, the great snake that terrorized mankind. The Zeus son became extremely smug because of this triumph of his. On seeing the god of love, Eros, the arrogance in Apollo filled up and he mocked him by asking what an impudent boy like him was doing with a man's weapons. After his victory over the python, Apollo considered himself as the only one who was worthy of holding a bow and arrow, and not some random winged boy whom he felt was trying to steal Apollo's glory. Of course, Cupid did not take this offense remark lightly, and what he did next wasn't expected. This guy shot on the chest of the self-obsessed Apollo, a golden arrow with a sharp glistening point. Little did he know that this hurt, this injury caused, wouldn't be tangible, but rather sentimental. With a second arrow, a blunt one with a lead underneath its shaft, the cupid shot Daphne, who happened to be a river nymph who was the daughter of the god of river, Peneus. She was devoted to hunting for the goddess Artemis, and according to her law, Daphne swore to chastity and virginity. Now these arrows had a quality, and the one which hit Apollo was the intense love and passion, and immediately after he was hit, his eyes fell on and his heart fell for Daphne who was out hunting. The arrow that struck Daphne made her heart fill with disgust for the god appearing in front of her. Apollo's love for Daphne grew so much that with every passing moment he felt that she was growing more and more beautiful. The intensity of his passion kept on increasing and he praised her more and more. The nymph, who couldn't even bear his presence, fled. He begged her to stop and explain to her his pure intentions, but it all went in vain. Because of the chase, he was getting more paranoid that she might get hurt, and slowly started revealing who he was. He expressed himself as the son of Zeus, and the one owning the land of Delphi, and that through him began everything. Also, he believed that being the god of beauty, no one should be able to resist him. He was head over heels for her and was so gagged by the god of prophecies, was unable to tell his own fate. He ran faster and almost grabbed her a couple of times, and as moments passed, Daphne was getting tired and exhausted and knew that she'd be caught soon. Apollo finally grabbed her, and in that moment, Daphne screamed to her father for help. She asked him to destroy her beauty that pleases others. Peneus helped her daughter who was firmly in the hands of Apollo. She started transforming into a tree as her hair became leaves, hands into branches, and her legs turned into roots. Before Apollo could even look at her, she was standing in front of him as a beautiful laurel tree. Even after Daphne's transformation, Apollo's love did not wither away. He took her leaves in his hands and kissed her wood, making her his own sacred tree. In Delphi, the oracle would chew laurel leaves before receiving the divine wisdom that she translated into a prophecy. Also the prize of the Pythian Games, the second most important games in antiquity after the Olympics, was a crown of laurel. Now, this was the only version of the story, but as we said earlier, there are a few more angles to this love story. Parthenius' version states that Daphne was the daughter of Amyclus and not Peneus, and she lived with a group of followers who were devoted to Artemis and vowed their virginity to the goddess. However, Lucipus, the son of the king of Pisa on Emmaus, fell in love with Daphne. He dressed up like a woman and joined the group of Daphne and befriended her. But Apollo, who was also in love with Daphne, an arrival to Onimaeus, used his power and provoked Daphne with the thought of bathing in a river. On reaching, 
Daphne and her friend stripped to step into the river, but Leucippus couldn't because of, well, obvious reasons. So the females forced him to strip, and as soon as they realized that he was a man, they hunted him down with their spears. But the misfortune of Daphne didn't end here as Apollo chased her after that. Here she prayed to Zeus instead of Peneus and turned into a tree. Pausanias, a Greek writer, wrote the same story as above, but just that here Daphne was the daughter of the river Ladon. Hyginus also presented the same story where Daphne begged Gaia, Earth, who turned her into a tree. Now, we can't help but shed some light on the artistic masterpiece of this love story. The story of Daphne and Apollo created a great deal of commotion amongst the visual artists. The transformation of a woman into a tree was one of the most difficult representations in the form of art as they had to depict the most difficult feature, that is, movement to the final act of the story shows a rapid movement. Here the art depicts Apollo chasing Daphne, and the moments before she gives up and screams to her father for his protection, where the two protagonists are moving as Daphne is transforming into a tree. Gian Lorenzo Bernini's Apollo and Daphne sculpture has perfectly captured it all very precisely. The divine work of his is famous because of its grace and movement, and it seems as if Apollo is actually grabbing her, and the desperation of getting caught is seen in the eyes of Daphne's sculpture. Simultaneously, the hands of Daphne transforming into branches is visible as well. The piece of Bernini is indeed considered as a masterpiece, because they say that the features and minuscule detailing of the work is surreal. The pain in the expression of Apollo is visible, as his beloved or rather one-sided love, whom he is forcefully trying to capture, and how Daphne transits from fear to relief as she transforms into a tree while she is groped. To capture such a moment that clearly resembles and splashes the naked truth is extremely tenuous, making this art one of the rarest ones. For ancient Greeks, love was a fascinating emotional and mental condition. It's no accident that in the Greek language, especially ancient Greek, there are not just one, but eight different words for love, each signifying a different aspect of affection for others and ourselves. But we can never ignore the fact that the Greek gods, more or less, always want to get things done in their own way, be it with consent or without. Here it is kind of justifiable that Apollo tried pursuing Daphne, even if she was not okay with it, because it was not in his control, given that he was struck by the Cupid. But I don't think that a god with the collective arrogance of the whole world would actually consider a no-means-no thing, or rather, would even know what consent means. And just to be fair, lust should be shadowed under love, but Greek mythology doesn't function in this way. For them, lust is a synonymous word for love. Anyways, you can't question the gods now, can you? So this is all for today, and do let us know how you feel about this video in the comment section below, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.